On logging in, your next screen will look something like this. As you see on the top bar, we have the knowledge bar, knowledge bar or question base, uh, knowledge base where you can search for a quick question and perhaps find an answer. As you move down, you get to generic requests, where again, you get to ask a question, query a finding, raise a user request, raise a feature request, request a risk acceptance, raise a bug. These are your main choices, but please in the knowledge base, you can find all sorts of information. For instance, I'll put in HIAB and see what it brings up. There we go. Am I looking to enroll it, restore it, a setup guide? As you can see, this function may answer a myriad of your questions. However, if it doesn't, under generic requests, we have ask a question. OK. Here we'll get your name, a summary of the question. If you wish to add any further information, screenshots, etc., you can add them here and a description of your question. If you are attaching anything that's sensitive, Please remember you can use the Outpost24 encryption key, which to start with, you would need to download, as you can see on the bottom of this screen, and save this. And then you'll be able to encrypt all information coming to us and we'll be able to de-encrypt it when it arrives. If you have a question or a query on a current finding, this is the tab for you. Again, you can put in a summary. You can put what product it's in. For instance, in this case, HIAB. You can attach anything else to this and again, encrypt it. When scans have run, you'll find that these create a script ID. You can put this in. Even though this says optional, filling in these boxes do make this a lot easier for us at MS to find exactly what you are talking about and require aid with. You can put in the last scan date and then a further description. By clicking on create, this message will come to us. Raise a user request. When you'd like to add or remove or amend a user to or within one or more of the Outpost24 products. As said on the logging page, hopefully a member of your management has requested to get you access into this. So this may well be a create for yourself or for a member of your team, their email, where they are, a description of what they do, and also what perhaps access rights that you want them to have, whether it's a read only, whether they can integrate with reporting. Please as much information as you can. Again, if you have more than one product, you could put in here whether you want them to have internal and external, whether it's RC, whether it's SWOT, just so we give them the right access and the right privileges in the area that you're asking for. Raise a feature request. When you would like Outpost24 to consider a new feature for one of their applications. Again, under product, you can select what you wish to talk about and give us as much information as possible. How this would help you, how this would assist you in doing your day-to-day -day role. And again, we'll judge this on how much this would help us as part of MS as the better we can improve the tool for the user use, this may well increase it for ourselves. Again, depending on what you put in, you may get an answer from us or we may get an answer from our development staff. If we see your question and we have a workaround or a way of using it, 
we could contact you and organize perhaps a tool show and a little teaching just to let you know exactly how to use the tool to answer your question. Request, requesting risk acceptance when you risk, wish to accept risk with your, within your report. Again, a summary, wish to accept a number of risks, what assets these are, the script ID that's run, as much mitigation as possible. Please remember this will be added to the accepted risk comment for any auditing that you have and also for our own information should we be asked any questions on this. As much mitigation as possible, please. The more you give us, the less we'll ask and the less when you come to be audited, they may go into depth. The actual vulnerability or risk name, the finding date and how long you'd like us to accept it for. If it's due to a patch that's coming out in three to six months, please give us three to six months on this. If it's a full year, tell us a year, because then we could scan. These will remain accepted for so many months. And then when the new patch or fix is available, you should have patched and fixed it by this date. So on the next scan, these will no longer be accepted to prove the fix. Razor bug. If the behavior of the tool is unexpected or erratic at any time, or you are clicking on a certain feature, but it doesn't appear to be working. For instance, uh, you wish to accept multiple risks yourself, and you've clicked on these multiple risks and the button accept all selected doesn't work, then this would be a bug. And this is where you could raise it with as much information and description as possible. And we can put this then through to our dev staff to get this fixed as soon as possible. That's the basics of the generic requests. I'll now go into NetSec. NetSec will cover something like the high app, your internal scanning. NetSec, CloudSec and AppSec. These options are roughly the same in all three of the below. I will quickly take you through NetSec. To raise a scope change request, when you'd like to add or remove or amend existing scopes. In summary, what you'd like to do, again, you're creating, are you modifying or do you want them deleting? your targets that you wish these changes to be made to or additions, the format that we can take these in. Again, any examples or if you have an Excel file that you can drag and drop in here to make a whole new scope, these could be added and encrypted again. Raising an ad hoc report request. If your team's been doing a series of maintenance over a weekend, for instance, you could ask us for an ad hoc report to be sent from, for instance, the Friday before this maintenance. We could send this, the maintenance could be completed. Again, you can see the boxes. And once it's completed, this links in nicely to raising an ad hoc scan request. So you have the results from Friday. Your maintenance team have finished the work over the weekend, rebooted servers, etc. You would now then perhaps ask for an ad hoc scan request. So on the Monday, we would receive this and scan to let you know if your teams have been successful in the updates, software changes, patches, etc. Again, a summary, you can give us individual targets or all groups names, etc., depending on how your infrastructure is set up, the location, a scan window. So for instance, we could scan tonight from 1416 current time. These can be changed to let us know when you would let us let 
us scan. The scan length, this is normally set at about 8 to 12 hours. A point of contact, so should we have any questions or we need to let somebody know via email that the scan is starting, we can include them in this and then a full description from yourselves. Again, if you need to attach anything, you can do so here and you can use the Outpost 24 encryption key. Keeping it all secure. If we're running PCI scans for yourselves, you may want to dispute one of these findings. And this is where then you would add that in. As you can see, all these templates are very similar and the information required is very similar. If at all you are unsure as you go along this, add your uncertainty to the description and this will let us know that you've got perhaps a little question or a little nag and we'll try and answer that question back within this box as we're setting up the scans. CloudSec, again, to amend an existing configuration when you wish for amendments to be made to an existing CloudSec configuration. We've got onboarding a new AWS configuration, onboarding a new Azure configuration, and then the CloudSec ad hoc reporting. Notice from this page, ad hoc scanning is not present due to the time that scanning can take place. Again, if you wish to amend an existing configuration, it can be done here, following the same template as for the HIAB or for NetSec. However, onboarding a new AWS configuration, slightly more information is required. A configuration name, an ARN, AWS geographies. Again, a contact name, should we have any questions or we need to inform you of anything. And then a full description of exactly what you wish us to do. The Zor, very similar again in template, configuration name. Tenant is now optional in this field. As you can see, the tenant of the active directory in which your application is registered to. Again, giving us more information of what we're doing to ensure we do this correctly for you. Username, client ID. Again, a contact name and a description. As always, secret slash password is optional. Anything you put in, please let me advise you again to use the encryption keys. If you choose not to, so be it. CloudSec ad hoc report. The summary, what you want, the configuration name, and a little description of what you're looking for so that we can try and tailor this and get it to you as you wish. Please bear in mind on a lot of the reporting from CloudSec, we cannot alter, add or remove anything from these scans. AppSec, very similar again. However, with AppSec, you can request a scan request. But again, amending existing application, like so, your summary, change type, nice drop down menu, create, modify, or delete the product, what you're using, what you're looking at, the application name, the note on the side of you. Uh, Please enter the name of the application as shown within the AppSec UI. This again helps us find everything and helps us ensure that we are doing what you've requested of us. And a quick overview. Let us know what you're doing because then if there is any uh, disparity between the two, we'll spot it 
And again, we could flag a little question just for clarity to yourselves. Very similar again in the description. If your application requires any request filters or host mapping, please ensure these are provided as part of this request. As I've been saying throughout, as much information as possible, please, to aid us to aid you. Snapshot. Very similar. Please read the notes. Again, as much information as possible. Thank you. SWOT. Summary, application name. SWOT scoping document. As it says for this one, please download the SWOT scoping document. This will give you hints and tips, clues, and let us know exactly what is required of the SWOT team to produce what you require. As it says here, please ensure all scoping documented is encrypted with the Outpost 24 encryption key. So you must use it for this document. Ad hoc scan request. As we've seen in NetSec, again, a summary, the application name, any seed URLs. This does say optional, but please help us to help you by filling in as much information as possible. Scan window start. The vulnerability, vulnerability testing, fuzzing, and this is optional. If you don't not sure, please leave it as none. The scan intensity, leave it as none. Put a note in the description that you've looked at the vulnerability testing and the canning setting and you are unsure. And one of our operators will have a look and contact you back with what they believe is best for you and a further explanation if required. Again, any attachments, please attach below. And remember the Outpost 24 encryption key. That concludes my short introduction to the managed service service desk. We have documentation on this that is available for you. And if you are unsure at any time during the onboarding process, please talk to us. We will do our best to guide you through it the first times to ensure that your ease of use is guaranteed. Thank you again for your time today. Bye.